And Comfortable Revolution is building an inclusive lifestyle brand where body positivity includes disability. Because disabled people are some of the most marginalized, 50% less likely to have a job, and almost 50% of people killed by U.S. police have a disability. Adam Tremel was tased to death during a mental health crisis. Deaf people get shot because they can't hear hands up. It's good we're talking about policing when it comes to race, but a variable hardly mentioned is disability. And Adam's story could be my story. I too live with mental illness. So we decided to spark some conversation. We run an online magazine and shop focused on disability. <clears throat> Media representation is required for equity because we can't begin to talk about rights until people see us as human. We're reclaiming our humanity with our products, which are conversation starters on disability and inclusion. We have two goals, create a disability culture that celebrates pride and show that we're a vibrant consumer segment. There are a billion disabled people in the world with $8 trillion in discretionary spending, yet hardly anyone makes products for us. So our primary business has been B2C, targeting disabled people and their allies in the U.S. All our corporate customers are converted retailers, so our focus is to grow this business line and target DEI professionals. There's increasing demand for custom printed t-shirts from both retailers and corporate buyers, expected to grow to a $7.5 billion market by 2028, with North America at 20% market share. Where we outpace our competitors is our combo of high aesthetic messaging that taps into the zeitgeist and mission. Our customers less concerned about the shirt than what's printed on it and who printed it. And the feedback is incredible. I got a message from a police officer thanking me for tools to confront biases. Messages like this one show us that we're, what we're doing is not just wanted but needed. People even thank Facebook for our ad. No greater testimony to product market fit than that. And so we're at a proof of market stage now. We did a Facebook ad spend in February and we're at 160K in revenue year to date with a $57 average cart value and a 2.5% conversion rate where 2 to 2.2 is industry average. We're also stocked at a campus bookshop and a black hair salon. And we're talking to two disability friendly cafes and Starbucks. I'm an MIT alum and my co-founder and I have a combined 20 years design, marketing and management experience. Dr. Wendy Ross, former CNN hero, is our champion. And Chid Liberty, who founded Africa's first fair trade apparel manufacturer, is an advisor. Our ask is $150,000. We'll use the money to move from print on demand to a fulfillment partner so we can increase our margins and control quality, which affects repeat customer rate. We'll also expand our customer acquisition strategy and make a part-time e-commerce hire, and we'll contact a customer service partner. When people tell me they need my product, I pay attention. We're serving a market that's been routinely excluded. And more than a brand, we're building a movement, and we want you to join us. So impactful, Corinne. Congratulations. This is really important and necessary. And, um, you know, I think we can all thank you for the trailblazing work that you're doing. Um, my question is about focus. It's a theme that's come up today. Um, but I can see like so many possibilities with this, you know, this really, you know, I, I, like mission, mission critical line that you have. And, and, so are you focusing on media and community or are you focusing on, on, you know, fashion and, um, and apparel? Um, are you focusing on B2B? Are you focusing on B2C? Like you're, 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 this is a giant vision that you have. Can you crystallize for us a little bit more how you're going to bring it to market and what your sequence really is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we see ourselves as a lifestyle brand first and embedded in that as community. We've been running a magazine for three years, so we really tried to embed ourselves in our community and listen to the important conversations. But our focus really is our e-commerce store. Um, like I said, it's really important for us to show that disability is a consumer market. So our focus is we have seen success with DTC and because all of our corporate customers really were just converted retailers that we hadn't pursued aggressively, this is something we want to focus on for the next year, growing that B2B side. But that really is where our focus is right now. Great. Great. I am obsessed. 
I I love I love your product. I, I think you really managed to. You said you hit into the zeitgeist, but you did it with really cool apparel, like that bag. You know, if you can be anything, be inclusive. I I think I think you're really sitting on something here. So I want to just focus on distribution. Really, my question is, how can I be helpful to you? But I'll, but I'll ask, like, what is your method? Is it is it like is it an affordable model to scale just through Facebook advertising? Do you need to be in an Amazon store? Do you need to be in Target stores? Like What's your vision? If just just focusing on apparel distribution and apparel sales, what to you is the path of least resistance to get you where you want to be? Yeah, absolutely. So our first thing is to get out of print on demand because the margins are high. Yeah. So we really are looking for a fulfillment partner. Right now, we actually want our focus to be to see online. Um, in terms of scalability, we actually want to take the model more to also a customer, uh, sorry, a creator-led community as well. That's, you know, further down the line. Um, but in terms of distribution, I think in terms of scaling, we definitely want to be in brick and mortar shops. We want to be physically where our consumer is. At the same time, we also know that the disability customer is largely online. They follow a lot of influencers and it's very community driven and community led. So we also want to make sure we're reaching our customer and controlling our customer. I, I'm dead serious. I think you should go to Urban Outfitters right now and see yeah. if there's a pre-order. I, th I think you need to think big and I think you need to start thinking about retail chains who understand that that statements and apparel mix and i i would start saying is it is it really e-commerce or is you know distribution is marketing should this be should this be in certain you know retail stores that are dying to be relevant yeah um, absolutely um as amanda mentioned i'm obsessed with the product as well the statement shirts um i have a daughter on the spectrum and it's nice to be able to have uh, apparel that you know speaks to her needs and and make sure that it's normalized and people understand so i really love the work that you've done uh one of the things that you mentioned was talking through how you will have repeat customers because a lot of people will either themselves or someone in the family find a great product but how do you get them to come back whether it be future evolutions of the product lines so that people will continue to be interested yeah, absolutely. So what's really unique about us is I think people are following a brand and not a product, which okay. gives us this uh, the ability to do a lot of fast pivot. Like people aren't here for the products, they're here to see the next design. And so what we're really positioning this store as is it's more about designs and we wanna really tailor campaigns and releasing of new designs and new products to keep people excited because today's consumer really wants a lot of cost customization and fast changing products. So we're making the focus about the design and it's all about the messaging about releasing a new design and get everyone, getting everyone excited and anticipating that next design can i just add also you have a wonderful energy and anyone anytime someone needs someone to speak on their behalf they should send you oh, thank you so much <laughs> You can tell that you guys have have a, a extensive experience in design also, Corinne. The, the presentation was really polished and professional. So congratulations. We all want to help. Thank you so much. Well, I'm open to help. <laughs>